Last time we started a discussion on route planning, and I pointed out that with the advent of online mapping solutions, we now have detailed maps available any time of day at our fingertips. These digital maps have become my preferred method of route planning. For this video, I want to continue our discussion by talking about the tools which I use to plan and execute my tours. Before I begin, let me point out that there is no one way to do anything. Certainly with the sheer number of applications available, there are numerous methods to achieve the same outcome that I do using my chosen tool set. While I will mention a few additional products, my focus is going to be on those applications and devices I have found which work best for me. Ultimately, the tools you choose will be based upon how you intend to use the product. If you just want to pick a start and end location and let the application or device pick a twisty or adventurous route for you, then using something like a smartphone app will most likely be sufficient. On the other hand, if you are like me and want complete control of your route, then a mapping application and GPS device is the way to go, at least in my opinion. Even though most of my routes are created electronically and followed with a GPS device, I do still use maps for planning and emergency purposes. Some of my favorite maps are those created by Butler. Butler maps are specifically created for motorcyclists with color-coded and graded roads. Butler has a team of folks that go out and ride the various regions around the country creating their rating system. G1 or gold is the best, G2 or red is the next one in the list, and G3 or orange is a slight downgrade. Butler also lists paved mountain roads and dirt roads in the region. Along with the roads and routes, the Butler maps also include descriptions of points of interest, and best rides on the reverse sides of every map. While these maps are a fantastic resource, remember that they only represent a fraction of the available roads in any given area. For example, the roads where I live in eastern Massachusetts are not listed nor in most cases even visible on the regional map. This is of course understandable given the map scale, as I have mentioned in previous videos, you cannot always find all of the good roads on every map, which is why I prefer the digital versions. If you want to access the Butler maps, another option is to join Rever. Rever is an online navigation platform that allows you to create custom routes and export them as GPX files. You can follow the Rever routes with your GPS or with their proprietary phone-based application. If you purchase the Pro version of Rever, which costs about $50 per year, then you gain access to the Butler Maps and their color-coded graded road system. Rever has some of the best social functions out there, allowing you to create events and challenges, but for me, the navigational functionality is a bit limited. I maintain a subscription to Rever so that I can utilize Butler Maps for research purposes, but for actual routing, I use the application I am going to talk about in the next section. When I first started touring in 2006, like most guys my age, I built my first trips using paper maps. In 2019, after I purchased my Victory Vision, I wanted to do longer trips and started looking for mapping software to create my own custom routes. I settled on Microsoft Streets and Trips. Streets and Trips was a great application, simple to use with a bunch of great features including real-time construction information. My understanding is that it was extremely popular among the RV crowd as well as folks who traveled for a living. Unfortunately, in their infinite wisdom, Microsoft decided to end Streets and Trips in 2013 in an attempt to move everyone over to Bing Maps. With the demise of Streets and Trips, I moved to a desktop application called Tire to Travel. This is another excellent routing tool which in 2013 became the official platform used by TomTom. 
In around the 2014 or 2015 timeframe, the folks who made Tire to Travel decided that a move to the web was in order, thus creating MyRouteApp.com. That would eventually become the application that it is now called MRA Route Planner. As a lifetime Tire to Travel user, I switched my subscription over to MRA Route Planner around 2016 and have been using it for all of my planning ever since. In the intervening years between 2013 and 2016, I did try several other applications, including Basecamp, but have always returned to Route Planner for its ease of use and robust functionality. Before I go on, let me say a few words about Garmin Basecamp, because I know someone will bring it up. Garmin Basecamp is a desktop application that has been around for quite a while. It is free to download, and while you can do a lot with it, it also comes with a rather high learning curve, and many people become frustrated before learning to be proficient with it. Garmin also goes back and forth about continuing to support the product. It was officially unsupported around 2017-2018, but the last update was in September of 2020. At this point, Garmin still does not have a replacement product, so it seems they continue to reluctantly support Basecamp. Personally, I have tried many times to like Basecamp, but find it too cumbersome, especially given that there are other affordable options available, such as MRA Route Planner, which allows me to do almost everything Basecamp does with much less headache. Yes, I know I am about to get slammed by the Basecamp faithful, but please remember this is just my opinion based upon my own personal experience. Like Rever, MRA Route Planner is a fee-for-service application, costing under $50 per year for the Gold Package, which is what I use. The Gold Package gives you all of the features available in MRA Route Planner, but excludes the ability to navigate on your phone via their proprietary application. If you want phone-based navigation, the All-in-One Package runs about $70 per year. Let me stop here and say that I am not affiliated with MRA Route Planner in any way. I make no money off of recommending their product. I do it simply because it is the tool that I have chosen and that gives me the best combination of features and ease of use. Here are some of the features I find especially useful in MRA Route Planner. First, I have the ability to create folders for route organization. Believe it or not, most other web-based applications don't allow this. For example, Rever does not allow you to create folders. I also have the ability to compare different route calculation methods. Those that are available with MRA Route Planner are OpenStreet, the Garmin or HERE calculation method, and the TomTom -tom method. You can overlay these three map options or calculation methods and compare their output and make corrections to your route if needed. You also have the ability to overlay maps on top of your base map set. You can overlay Google Maps, Google Satellite, the HERE or the HERE satellite maps. You can also overlay the OpenStreet or the OpenStreet terrain maps, just to name a few. MRA Route Planner gives you the ability to split a route into two or more other routes. It also gives you the ability to join two or more routes together. You can then view two or more routes on the same screen. You can also set your avoidances to match those of your GPS device. MRA Route Planner also gives you the ability to create favorites and add them to your route, as well as it gives you the ability to save in several different formats, including GPX 1.0, GPX 1.1, the .int or TomTom itinerary files, or a KLM file that can be used in Google Maps. You can also print turn-by-turn -turn directions in the form of a PDF. So now let's talk about GPS devices versus phone apps. And yes, here I go again. I know I am going to get myself in trouble, but I do not like navigating by phone. I know that phones are becoming much more popular for navigational purposes and that I risk being canceled, but my preference is not to use my phone, but to use a GPS device. And here's why. 
Phones are not waterproof or ruggedized. Phones are not glove friendly. Phones are not made to be viewed in bright sunlight. And phones are dependent upon cell phone coverage. Now I know there are workarounds for all of these limitations, but that's just it. There are workarounds. Cell phones are not designed to be mounted to the handlebars of a motorcycle traveling over bumps and potholes through intense heat and torrential rains. I know a lot of people do it, but personally, I would rather have a device designed for the rigors of long distance motorcycle travel. With that said, the biggest reason I do not like using my phone to navigate while traveling is that I want a break from the damn thing. I am out on the road to be silent, to be contemplative, not to be consistently notified about every Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube post. I don't care about traffic warnings or when someone is pulled over ahead. If I am on a road where I need such things, then I am probably on the wrong road or I am trying to make time on the interstate and even with a backup, it is still the fastest way. I am traveling to be free of such things and my phone stays in the trunk until it is needed. For me, I have always preferred a dedicated GPS device, one that contains all the maps I need without having to worry about preloading them. I also want a device that is everything a phone is not, that is ruggedized and waterproof. For me, I have always used Garmin GPS devices. My first one was a Zumo 220 and then a Zumo 390, which I still have, and now I have a Garmin Zumo XT and Navigator 6 for my BMW. Have all of these devices always been perfect? No, of course not. I have had my love-hate moments, but overall they have functioned and served me very well. Now, one caveat is that you do need to learn how to use these devices. Most of the functionality is very easy once you do it for the first time, such as using GPX tracks. This learning curve with the GPS devices and with your applications is why I built the Creating Epic Road Trips course. I have done videos on various routing and planning topics over the years, but the YouTube format of shorter and shorter videos is a very difficult one in which to properly educate the viewer on a more complex topic. The Creating Road Trips course contains more than three hours of material, for example. If you want to learn more about how I use the MRA Route Planner and my Garmin GPS devices to create my epic road trips, head to my website at www.livingoffthe-slab.com forward slash courses dot html. Next time we're going to pull from the first module of this course and talk about the seven things you need to ask yourself before planning your trip. Alright guys, ride safe out there.